the funny thing with me is like uh, I'm playing for my own. <laughs> like if the, seriously, if I don't look at the band, if I can't see the band, and they stop and leave, I will keep playing. Because, you know, on my mix I have the click and the drums and everything is so busy, you know, like all these weird signatures and everything. And then I have the pre-recorded guitars to get a little bit, a little bit of the feel. That's what I'm using in my studio as well when I rehearse, you know, uh, our songs. So if they leave, I'm not gonna <laughs> tell the difference because I can't hear them, you know. Bonjour à tous, bienvenue sur French Grip Channel, on va parler de Georges Colias dans cette vidéo, mais je vais d'abord dire deux phrases en anglais, je reviens juste après pour vous expliquer de quoi il en retourne. Hello everyone, welcome to French Grip Channel, this is the first video on the channel which is in English, uh, don't worry, everything is in English, it's just subtitle in French, so this is a just a short intro uh, in French, and then we have all the content in English. Voilà, c'est bon, c'est fait, donc euh, vous pouvez vous foutre de ma gueule pour mon accent anglais si vous voulez. Il euh, y a une interview de Georges Colias dans cette vidéo, Georges Colias c'est le batteur de Nile, c'est l'un des meilleurs batteurs de métal extrême que la terre ait jamais porté et j'ai eu la chance de tourner avec lui en 2013 et donc quand je lui ai proposé de faire une petite interview lors de son passage à Marseille au Jazz Road, au Pen Mirabeau exactement il était d'accord, une tournée avec Chrision et avec deux autres groupes et ce qui était génial c'est qu'il y avait plein de sujets à évoquer, il y avait son nouvel endorsement avec Zildjian, il y avait son partenariat avec Pearl bien évidemment, il y avait son studio à Athènes, euh, les nouvelles parties de batterie de l'album de Nike qu'il a enregistré tout seul enfin bref on a parlé de plein 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 de choses, on a parlé du fait qu'il ait 45 ans aussi. Je vais pas tout vous spoiler euh, en ce qui concerne cette interview, sachez juste que moi j'ai trouvé ça très intéressant, c'est un être extrêmement sympathique, il est grec, il parle anglais très vite, donc c'était euh, l'agonie la, de sous-titrer -sous parce que bah, je voulais absolument que ce soit en français, donc on n'allait pas non plus doubler le truc, mais c'est sous-titré en français. Donc pour une fois, bah, ceux qui veulent regarder la chaîne et qui viennent d'autres pays que le nôtre ou la Belgique ou les Antilles qui sont euh, françaises, mais bon ça reste une île loin, donc euh, voilà, donc je suis très content que les Antillais nous regardent, les Martins tout ça, tous ces gens, donc je suis ravi, bonjour à tout le monde, et euh, mais sachez que si vous n'êtes pas francophone, no if that, if you're not uh, franco, francophone, je sais pas comment on dit, euh, euh, French speaking, donc si vous n'êtes pas French speaking, vous pouvez regarder la vidéo quand même, et puis surtout si vous êtes français, il bah, y a qu'à lire les sous-titres, je me suis fait chier à les faire, donc ce serait bien sympa si vous pouviez les lire si vous ne comprenez pas l'anglais, puis si vous comprenez l'anglais, eh ben laissez-vous porter par cette toute petite interview de Georges Collier, ça dure quand même 19 minutes, où il va vous raconter plein de trucs, et euh, j'espère que vous en retirez quelque chose d'intéressant, c'est un être extrêmement sympathique et extrêmement talentueux, d'ailleurs juste avant qu'on commence à parler, je vous mets un petit extrait de la balance, qui a été raccourci exprès pour l'occasion, parce qu'il a été vraiment sympa, il a dit à tout le monde on fera qu'un titre au lieu de trois, parce que j'ai une interview avec un mec que je connais bien, et que j'aimerais bien euh, avoir un peu le temps pour le faire, donc c'était hyper sympa. Je remercie Virgile de Tentacle Industries de m'avoir permis de venir plus tôt, euh, lui qui organisait le concert. Je remercie tous les gens de l'Orga là-bas, et puis je remercie bien évidemment Nile et puis Georges Colias évidemment de m'avoir accordé cette interview. J'espère que ça va vous plaire. Allez So George, tell us about this brand new Zildjian rig. Zildjian. Okay, so first of all, I used to be with Zildjian before, like years, years, before actually 2004, I think, uh, 2005, that's where I, uh, I got the savings. But uh, now I'm back, I'm uh, the happiest ever. <laughs> so anyways, I'll, I'll show you, these are, these are all like hand-picked symbols. So like even, for example, like oh, uh, so the sweet crash, right? Uh, I think I chose like uh, over like seven symbols, you know, so I really took my time there, although we were in rush, that was in London, the Zulzian Bowl. But anyways, I'm super excited, man. This, this is like all like 
one by one symbols. Anyway, so we have. So let me start with the right. Okay, this is uh, please, the, please, please. the Mega Ball, the A Mega Ball, which is the main metal right. You know. uh, the cool news with this is 21 inch. Um, it's the tone. It's so similar. You know, check it out. So any double right patterns and stuff, they sound amazing. So I'm very, very happy with these. Uh, these are the Master Sound K hi cuts. Uh, amazing. This is what I would probably use for my uh, fusion kit as well. <laughs> so cool, so crispy. Uh, it has this uh, little, you know. Uh, I don't know how you call these. Wavy. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the waves, yeah. So, you know, it breathes a little bit better. So, anyways, this is uh, a custom splash, 6 inch, and an 8 inch. And this uh, case class 8 inch again. Um, to be honest, that was uh, I wanted to go with a 9 inch, but not 10 inch, because 10 is starts to become a little bit more like noisy and... And you need some space in the kit. Uh, the space was never a problem with the 10 inch. It's just, you know, it, it, 10 inch and up, it goes to the crash zone. Uh, but the 9 inch was, was perfect. You know? But anyways, it wasn't available, so I had to use the, the 8 inch for now. So that's really, really cool. Uh, anyways, here we got... Uh, Find a high uh, and a K custom. This is 16. This is 17. Okay, these are mainly for my blast beats, like you know, like to play bomb blast, bomb blast or something. You lead with the snare, so the left is accenting to give a little bit more groove. Uh, this is a hybrid K, uh, 18 inch. And, sorry, 19. And this is 20. Uh, a custom. So if if you knew my old setup, I'm up pretty much on every single one inch. Yeah. So I used to play 17s, now I play 18s, 19 instead of 18, 20 instead of 18, you know, so I, I just love them, they just speak so much, they're so much more smooth, you know. Uh, so what else we have? The classic crash is fairly new, 20 inch, you gotta hear this thing. Really <laughs> loving it. Um, a dark crash, uh, 19. K custom, okay, and same here. I got a K uh, dark crash, it's 18, and the sweet crash, 18. Special recorder hi hats, 12 inch instead of 10 inch. I used to play with the 10 inch were like really cool for space, but they're really bouncy, you know. Like, so it was never comfortable. I, to be honest, I don't know why I was using 10 inch for such a, such a long time. So these are perfect. How important, always. And uh, I also have a 13 uh, A custom hi hat here uh, for my multi pedal stuff, which we don't use on this tour, but uh, definitely using uh, some other tools and in the studio, you know. So this is this is it mainly. And for my studio setup, it's going to be pretty much similar, maybe with a couple more singles. Yeah, everything in double, or you have the same kit for. This is my touring kit, so there's gonna be one for the studio, and <coughs> one for the States. I gotta have like uh, multiple sets, but you know, the, the most important uh, of all, I would say it's my studio kit, because uh, you know, I'm, I'm recording all the time there, you know. So I'm gonna add uh, maybe a stack here, like a small, like 12 inch or something. Uh, what else do I have? Maybe a stack here, like two splashers or something, and I'll figure out. So, it, but it's, it's similar, it's almost the same. And what about the kit? The kit is not the Masterworks you have on in Athens, yeah. I, I guess. This is the, the Master Series? Yeah, this is Masters, uh, the Premium Maple, uh, which uh, the tour agency actually bought it for me. So we, you know, because we tour with them all the time. Uh, and it's, everything's Masters, except the first Tom. This is uh, from Vision Series. Okay. So it's a cheaper, I would say, but it kicks ass, you know, for me, I wouldn't mind to do with a vision kit or a, even an expert kit. Um, but yeah, this is a really, really nice kit. I really like it. Um, it's been, like, I don't know how many years, like eight years that I'm touring with this kit? Seven or eight years. <laughs> the problem is some other drums we tour with this kit, they don't really take care of it, you know? And, but we, you know, we, we bought some new hardware this time to get it together a little bit. And overall, I'm very, very, very happy. And of course, you have your signature uh, pedals yeah. from Axis. Yes, these are uh, my George Collins edition, they call it. So it's pretty similar to the Longboard A's. It's just, you know, a few different things, like for example, the Micro Tune Spring here. 
the angle remains the same. It's not the 21 that gets the beater closer. Uh, the beater is also redesigned. <laughs> so we, yeah, we. I mean, it's actually an old beater. The I don't know if you remember the Sony yeah, yeah. hammer. Of course. We, we took one part of it and then we made it like straight, and uh, it works really, really well. For me, the, the beater is always crucial. You know, the weight of the beater. Uh, I would say even more important than the pedal sometimes. You know. So it's all it's a crucial thing about settings. So anyways, that's it with the pedals. Uh, <coughs> and you have some rig here. Yeah, on this tour, well, actually, I'm I'm using this this strap here, and uh, this is uh, I got uh, all the drums. I got a, a you know a mix like of all drums uh, and uh, guitar tracks. Uh, guitar track actually, it's a mono guitar and uh, the click because you know we have to play with the click with so many samples um, but anyways so I have like a really really nice mix uh, this is the first time we go re really digital you know um, it, and it's all like on the iPad so whatever I need to change you know this goes up to tom 4 and then the rest of it this guitars this is the click you know so if I need to adjust something it's, it's really really easy uh, technically it's like it's like my studio in my studio I'm, I'm like this as well and uh, it made a huge difference because, you know, depending on the room, sometimes you're missing a little bit of bass. Yes. So I'm going to add a little bit more toms just to feel the drum get a little bit better, you know. Sometimes there's so much high end, so I'm going to cut a little bit of the cymbals, which I'm not really using cymbals in my mix, just a little bit to give me the space. Yeah. Uh, but <coughs> not to be in the, in the box. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, the funny thing with me is like uh, I'm playing for my own. <laughs> like if the, seriously, if I don't look at the band, if I can't see the band, and they stop and leave, I will keep playing. Because, you know, on my mix I have the click and the drums and everything is so busy, you know, like all these weird signatures and everything. And then I have the pre-recorded guitars to get a little bit, a little bit of the feel. That's what I'm using in my studio as well when I rehearse, you know, uh, our songs. So if they leave, I'm not gonna <laughs> tell the difference because I can't hear them, you know. I know. So, what about the snares? The snare, this is um, uh, actually same as the kit, okay, for mm -hmm. this one. And uh, this one is a 12 by <coughs> 7 inch, I think. I think so. Sure. Yeah, it's a little bit old, but it sounds nice. Look, listen to the crack. And it, you know, this is tuned in a more like a. We try to mute it a little bit and not, you know, to have it ring, you know, a lot, because uh, I use it for a couple songs as a side scene. Yeah. One is Cuff Fear, which got this panel that you know people like. Yeah. Which is this. Yeah, so it's like a, the idea of a marching thing, you know, like marching drums or something. So obviously we're gonna have marching drums here. I didn't want samples, so that will do it. And it's been years you play Evans drum heads. The Evans, yeah, I use the G2s on the top, G1s on the bottom. Uh, HD dry for my 14 and uh, 12 inch snare, and that's it. The, the G2s, <coughs> I don't think you can go wrong with them, you know, like anytime. But there are other Evans heads which I really like, like uh, the EC2s, um, really like nice with a little bit of EQ drum heads, you know, so they're ready to go. Just put them in, you play. But I like these because, you know, it helps the kit a little bit, you know, to, to breathe. Uh, although, uh, for our mix, I had to use a little bit of uh, the sky gill, hmm? you know, these little things that make it a little bit more dead, you know. But that's for the mix because in my studio and my recordings, the drums breathe a lot. You can hear like a doom, you can hear the tail, you know. Yeah, yeah. I never like like really muted drums, you know. And you play this fast stuff with not so tight drum heads. Yeah, I like, I mean, yeah, the floor drums are finger tight as, as uh, well as my kicks. And even the, even the snare. The snare, I, I started tuning a little bit higher just for the, the tone. Uh, if you're talking about speed, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Because I remember 10 years ago when we toured together, yeah. because we toured together, uh, your snare was really, really dead comparing to yeah. mine or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I like this uh, really loose snare. My problem is, and I started you know, going up and up a little bit more, you know, um, because it doesn't, it doesn't really speak well the recordings. Uh, it depends on what you do. Like, for example, if it's like a, a mid-tempo, Death metal song like a pa 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 you know something not not super fast, 
then it speaks really nice. So you can hear it like in the mix, like it's really, really cool. But uh, when you apply dynamics, like for example, you know, whatever, you know, it just doesn't do it anymore. And man, I did so many recordings and it felt really, really killer. <laughs> while I was playing. And then I heard the recording, I was like, man, the snare is like too low. And you missed something. Yeah, yeah. So I started going like a little bit more up. This is tuned a little bit higher. But um, the speed thing, it doesn't really affect me because I'm not really using good rebound or, you know, fingers and stuff. No, you're playing with the wrist. Yeah, it's all wrist. Uh, I would say it maybe gives me a little bit more control. Um, but I get it, yeah, it's, it's less rebound, maybe it uh, gets me a little bit more tired and um, I just can't tell because I'm... And you did the, um, the vinyl nihilotic rights, the, the drums by yourself? Yes. In the studio? Uh, me and Carl, yeah, we're in the studio. In Athens? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, you know, now I have like a really, really nice rig. Uh, I'm using okay. sound hoop mics, <coughs> which are like... One of the newer things I added to my kit. Uh, I'm with this company. When I play live, I use also the rims. Okay. You see, everything that touches here is the mic. That's it. Uh, but in my studio, I'm using these clips. Okay. For the drums. Uh, and that's only for, um, <coughs> like, uh, for example, like uh, I'm using Pro Drums. They have their own hoops, you know, so I can't really change the hoops. Uh, so we found this solution for the studio. I'm going with the clips, but live, of course, I go with the, the, the whole nine yards, you know, the, the whole way. Uh, and, you know, with these and my new mixer, Midas mixer I have, dude, the tone is, like, seriously, uh, Vial has the best sounding drums we ever recorded. I think so. It's funny because, you know, the studio is like, it's, in my home and you know but I, I did invest um, you know a little bit of money you know for uh, like a nicer gear nicer cables like every 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 little thing yeah, with, yeah and, and with years uh, you're yeah. now comfortable to play and record yourself and mix yeah. and edition and etc uh, well mixing I'm, I never mix anything oh, okay like any bands I'm recording I, I'm responsible to compose drums well first of all get into their music then compose drums for their style. And I always ask him, I was, I'm like, okay, you want me to play for the band? <coughs> or you want you want some overplay. some some Kolias thing in the band? Yeah, but if, if I add some Nile stuff in a band that plays like, uh, let's say, like Fear Factor, like, you know, that compressed and really syncopated, you know, uh, metal, death metal, whatever, you know, and, um, then I'm gonna sound like a really bad drummer, you know? So I always try to get in the music and play the best possible drums for every band. So I have a huge experience recording drums because I do it like every two months or something, plus my own stuff, plus videos, plus, you know, like everything. And you do this since mid, you're in night since 2005. Uh, no. Yes, yeah. So it's been more than 20 years that you're in the... Yes, yeah, but to be honest, the, the many, 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 many recordings, they started happening the last five years. Okay. Like, I'm you know, super, super busy, and I'm so happy because the bands that approach me, they're not death metal bands, like in the past. So they're like, um, I even did a pop song. Recently. Yeah. Yeah, it was a pop art. So like, you want yeah, because, because sometimes we see you on, the, on Instagram or YouTube yeah. playing in a fusion kit, <coughs> very <Yeah>. smaller. <laughs> Sorry about this, you know, <laughs> classic touring. Um, yeah, my my, two, my uh, second kit in the studio, which is the kit I'm spending most of my time, is uh, the Maple Gun, the new Maple Gun from Pro. And it's a simple kit like a uh, kick drum, 10, 12, 14, 16. Okay. Uh, then I got two snares, same like a 14. Uh, it's actually a reference snare I'm using there. <coughs> the, 20, the 20 ply? Yeah, the 20 ply, yeah. That's probably my favorite snare, to be honest. I tried everything, man. This is like, it never failed. Anyways, and um, the, my side snare is a 12 by 5, the firecracker. The, the, the famous cheap pearl snare, yeah. which is rocks, you know? But I got the aluminum version uh, for my fusion kit. But now I added in one more kick drum on this side. So <coughs> I obviously have a double pedal, you know, for some licks and stuff. Uh, but then I have another double pedal. And, and you, play, you play the right foot in the left yes. pedal. Okay. Yes. So there's one kick here. Like, like Dave Wickle. Yeah, not, he does it with not the. That's good. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Dave did it many times. Uh, Damien Smith as well. Like uh, many, many drums. But uh, the reason I did it is because for my other band, Royal Time Machine, 
uh, in our recordings, everything is pretty much like fusion, pro prog, rock or something. <coughs> but there are a lot of parts, especially on the bass solos, that the band has to, you know, drop a little bit, you know, dynamic-wise. Then I'm using my 18-inch. Uh, it's 18 by 16, I think, or by 14, 18 by 14. It's such a nice, ringy, singing bass drum. It's like, you know? Beautiful. Really different from the triggers you use here, of yeah. course. Yeah, yeah. Last question about the, the drumming. You're, this is not a secret, you're, you're 45 now, now. I'm 45, yes. You're 45 and you still have pleasure to play those really fast things. Yeah. Because it's really hard. Uh, you it was always hard. You train yourself. Yeah, it was always hard. I think you practice a lot. I gotta be honest, okay? And this is like a really important message to the uh, older fans. Okay, I'm 45 and I play way better than when I was 26. I swear. I swear. I swear. I'm not, I'm not saying it just to say No, no. I feel stronger, more precise, faster. I don't see anything yet. Maybe it's the DNA or something. I don't know. But I haven't, I haven't noticed anything in we my had, life. We had this discussion when we were in tour 10 years ago. You told me about the fast fibers yeah. on the muscles. Yeah. And you think you have definitely it. Yeah, still. But, you know, in general, in my life, you know, I haven't noticed like something, oh, I'm 45, now I'm slowing down, or, you know, things are more, you know, maybe the hangover. Maybe, uh, you know, I, I can't go out until six o'clock in the morning and drink. I can't do that. You know, but that's like a, that's a choice. It's not, I don't think it's organic, you know. <laughs> but anyways. Uh, oh, you look in perfect shape. Huh? You look in perfect shape. I'm, I'm okay, you know, trying to always stay busy and active, you know. And the main thing, man, you know, for what we do, we sweat. Man, I'm sweating like a pig here. Every day. Um, actually, because of the interview, I didn't sweat on the soundtrack because we did one song. But usually we do like three songs and I'm starting on the soundtrack as well. So, it's, I think it's healthy, you know? I mean, as long as you don't get burned, you know, with the lights and stuff. And here it's cold, a bit. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so far so good, man. You know, I don't know when I get 55 or something. But we'll see. We just have to look. Car is 59. And yeah, he's still no, doing great. And he's still shreds. He's a guitar player. So oh. <laughs> we don't know yet. I know Pete Sandoval is uh, an older, you know, older than me, and he's kicking ass, you know, uh, like always. So I don't know. I don't know. But to be honest. Drumming, I mean, if I can't, if I'm not able to play the Nile stuff, uh, I won't care, man, because, you know, the, the, the instrument itself, like, you know, there's so many styles that, you know, I can, I can play and enjoy the drumming. You know? And things to play. Yeah. So, so many times. It's all about, you know, the joy. It doesn't have to be, like, extreme all the time, you know. And we just finished this interview without talking about drum technique, without pre yep. talking about uh, swivel technique or blast beats or everything. So it's really great. And I thank you so much thank for you, this. Man. Thanks so much, man. It's a pleasure.